to the entertainment talking sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I'll be live in 57 minutes. I'm sure this will be a big topic of conversation, probably about a half hour by the time this video is finally uploaded, but an absolute bombshell just dropped uh, regarding DeAndre Baker, something that we've all been, you know, kind of waiting for to see, you know, how this case is going to play out. And, uh, you know, obviously at first it looked very doom and gloom for DeAndre Baker before we got all the facts. And, you know, there was a warrant. There were su su supposedly a ton of witnesses that were willing to testify that DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar had committed these crimes. Well, then all of those witnesses recanted their statements. There was no video evidence. DeAndre Baker was seen working out, getting ready for the season, and it seemed as if there was a very strong possibility that he was going to be ruled, ruled at least not guilty and be acquitted of all charges, and the New York Giants have not uh, cut him yet to this point, and, you know, were to come out that he was going to be able to um, practice with the team, and that still may be the case. I'm not going to rush to judgment, but according to this article that's come out from Pat Leonard about recent, uh, you know, more recent finding, findings on the case, it does not look good for DeAndre Baker. I'll wait and see how it all plays out, but I'll let you guys decide. And of course, you could check out the article. It's on the Daily News website, written by Pat Leonard, obviously a very credible source, um, and he posted it on Twitter. This was the headline to the article. Exclusive video evidence, Instagram DMs, testimony show payoff, cover-up for DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar further implicate, implicate NFL players in crime. Um, and the guy that they, uh, and I, I wasn't able to pull up every single quote. There are a ton of quotes uh, throughout the entire article. But the guy, Johnson, that they are referring to is a childhood friend of both DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar. And according to the information that they've received, he was basically handling the payoffs uh, for these witnesses at, you know, while they recanted their statements. And I, like I said, I pulled up as many quotes as I could. There's at least another seven or eight that will better tell the story. But just know that the guy that they're referring to was a boyhood friend of both DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar. So here is the first thing I was able to pull up. The explosive warrant obtained as a public record from the uh, bro. bro I think it's Broward County, Florida, Clerk of Courts, seeks access to iCloud accounts associated with Baker and Dunbar. The warrant cites evidence collected through previous warrants, which includes video footage and direct messages that allegedly show witnesses Dominic Johnson oversaw the payoff of Baker's and Dunbar's four alleged victims on May 15th at the office of Dunbar's attorney, Michael Grieco. So it was Dunbar's attorney, supposedly, where these payoffs went down. I made those people... Um, wait, I made them, I made them same people that said they got robbed come in and say them boys ain't had nothing to do with it. Johnson allegedly wrote on May 16th in a series of incriminating direct messages on his Instagram account. So there's the first huge mistake. Usually when you're trying to cover up a crime, which is supposedly what may have taken place, probably not a good idea to be talking about it on social media. And supposedly, you know, from the uh, evidence that's being presented, the guy that's allegedly trying to cover up the crime for Baker um, and Dunbar was talking about it on social media, on Instagram. Next thing. But Johnson's own written words in his Instagram direct messages also corrobor uh, corroborate to a robbery and occurred, and those two who were charged with the participants, the warrant summarizes, all four victims have given sworn statements that they were paid at the office that day to recant their sworn initial statements against Dunbar by signing affidavits. Combined, the four men say they were they pay, they were they received payments in total of $55,000. And then it gets into exact specifics. During the elevator ride, the unknown person removes a black bag from his shoulders, opens it and removes money. The person also shows the open bag to Johnson, who's the, the boyhood friend, and you can see a large quantity of money. Johnson then takes the bag, the warrant reads. Then everyone meets in front of Grieco's office before going inside. By 3.15 p.m., everyone has left the building, and at approximately 4 p.m., Moretti says he received notification from Grieco indicating there had been a change in testimony from the victims and witnesses. One victim says he received $30,000 in Grieco's office. A second says he received $20,000 in the lawyer's office. And a third says he only received $5,000 and gave half the money to a fourth victim. 
One of the four victims says he was being directed that he didn't see what he thought he saw on the night of the alleged armed robbery, the Warren states. And the victim who received $5,000 said Greco walked back into the office just after the transaction had occurred and said there is no way he, Greco, could not have seen this transaction. So if this is all true, I would think, if it's true again, I want to reiterate that, I would think the lawyer Greco, uh, who's representing Dunbar, also could be in huge trouble. Next thing. Also, it was later discovered after viewing the officer's body-worn cameras, the victim on scene were telling the responding officers that one of the suspects left a cell phone on scene. It continues, according to the victims, Johnson took custody of the cell phones and concealed it from law enforcement. Johnson, again, the boyhood friend. This piece could have been identified, uh, could have identified one of the other participants in the robbery. Johnson's actions contaminated the integrity of the investigation as he made the victims recant their statements only after giving them cash, the warrant adds. Communication was established between all three parties. However, the contents of that communication could not be identified. Those messages could still be in possession of Apple Inc. This warrant will assist us in identifying communication methods used by involved parties and, and assist in obtaining additional information to further a criminal investigation. And I got a couple more things I'm going to show you guys, but I mean, this case looks as if it is nowhere near being finished. And I'll say this right now, don't bank on DeAndre Baker playing football for the New York Giants this year. If we have a football season at all, um, it seems as if he could be in big, big trouble with the law. Next thing, Johnson is telling Baker to come to Dunbar's office, Moretti writes, Baker replied, this is uh, in regards to, I guess, some text messaging or Instagram messaging or whatever it is that they received. Yo, I'm in the city now getting cash. How much to bring? I'm trying to get there to you as soon as possible. There appears to be several phone calls between Baker and Johnson, the warrant continues. Johnson appears to be nervous by telling Baker, yo, these people are going to leave. Then, according to the warrant, CCTV video evidence shows Grieco. Johnson, an unknown individual, and the four alleged victims at the attorney's office on May 15th appearing to make the payoff. The new warrant says that in the video, Greco is seen leaving the 24th floor office, taking the elevator to the lobby and bringing Johnson and the four alleged victims back into the office at 2.25 p.m. And then finally, the last bit of information I wanted to pull up for you guys. Baker's attorney, Bradford Cohen, recently claimed to have testimony from two witnesses that they never saw the Giants corner pull a gun or rob anyone. But both Johnson's own written words in his Instagram direct message also corroborate a robbery. And it occurred, and those two were charged, uh, were the participants, the warrant summarizes. All four victims were given sworn statements that they were paid at the office that day. And yeah, I think I actually already pulled up that. That quote. There were just so many. I tried to get it all together in an organized fashion as fast as I could. But here's my opinion on it, guys. Uh, I, I was widely criticized, and rightfully so. I jumped, I, you know, I jumped at it at first, and I'm not trying to say I told you so at all. I hope he's innocent uh, for his sake and obviously for the New York Giants' sake. But all I'll say is this, based on my opinion, based on what has come out from this article, does not look promising. Um, and, you know, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out, but... Um, According to that, it looks as if there's at least a, a strong possibility that there was a payoff to get these witnesses to change their 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 statement. Uh, you know, obviously, they were worried that it was going to incriminate DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar if that were the case. And if it is the case, well, expect to see DeAndre Baker behind bars along with Quentin Dunbar and don't expect to see DeAndre Baker playing for the New York Giants anytime soon. And if there's any truth to this, it would be in the New York Giants' best interest to move on as quickly as possible. There's no reason to, uh, you know, keep this up. Now, obviously, I completely get where the New York Giants are coming from, innocent until proven guilty, and I guess they'll have to wait and see how the case plays out. But Joe Judge and the New York Giants and defensive coordinator Patrick Graham probably should start to think about who could be replacing DeAndre Baker, if there's any validity to this at all. And the question is, who will it be? You know, if they have to move on, will it be a guy like Sam Beal, who's been often injured but is known as more of an exterior corner? Could Julian Love get an opportunity on the outside? He did play that at college. Um, the same could be said for Darnay Holmes. Even though most people view him as a nickel corner, he did play there in college for UCLA. So we'll see who gets that opportunity, or they could bring in a free agent to try to compete for that job. 
And maybe it'll be DeAndre Baker, but if you ask me right now, it does not look promising that DeAndre Baker will be with the New York Giants, at least according to this story uh, that was written by Pat Leonard of the Daily News, and I highly suggest everybody uh, go over there and check it out and form your own opinion about it. But uh, yeah, not promising for DeAndre Baker. I wish him nothing but the best, but um, good chance the New York Giants will have to move on. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.